Last year, tennis's man on the moon was Novak Djokovic, astounding everyone with a remarkable season that echoed those of the greats. Justin Gimmelstob met the American legend Pete Sampras to get the lowdown on the man flying high. Well, Novak Djokovic, one of the greatest years, if not the greatest year in the history of the sport. What impressed you the most about Novak Djokovic in 2011? I think mentally he's really turned the corner. I mean, he's so strong uh, up in his head. I feel like a few years ago he was a bit up and down. Now I just feel like he's this incredible competitor. As you saw at the US Open, he lost the first two sets against Roger, came back and won it. Um, just, you always believed in his physical skills. Yeah, physical, moved great, had a great uh, game, big serve, big forehand, but I feel like mentally he was a bit fragile, and now he's like he's a rock out there. Best I mean, mover in the sport right 100%, now? 100%. Best 100%. I mean, he sport. moves like a, like a cheetah. And Pete got to impart some words of wisdom firsthand when the new number one met him in Los Angeles. He asked a lot about being number one. He asked being on top for six, right seven. right when he came number one right. after Wimbledon. Right, and yeah. he just asked, what I thought about it, what a, what, it, what I did to, to stay number one, I just said for me was I just wanted it more. No, it was about just keeping it simple. I said I just played my tennis, I didn't say or do much at my press conferences, I didn't want any, any distractions, I just wanted to focus on winning. And I just kept it simple, it, it worked for me. Novak, you're dealing with a country that loves you, it's a different sort of time for you, but for me, in my experience, I just kept it simple. What about managing the relationships with this competition? Because when you played, you were an island. He's a pretty friendly and yeah. charismatic guy. Did you guys talk about how to manage those relationships with his competitors? Like I said, I'm not going to change him. You know, I just this is I was pretty private, as you know, pretty shy. I kept I kept to myself. Where Novak's a little bit more emotional out there. I think um, he can take a little bit of what I said, but I think Novak's doing great. I mean, he's having a, a great year. Um, and I just said, for me, I just kept it simple. I just, I trained in Florida. I didn't get involved in a lot of different things. I just wanted to be the best player. And I think he heard some of that, but I think he also feels a responsibility for his country to be everything. a spokesperson, everything, a charitable guy. I mean, not saying I wasn't charitable. I just, I was very isolated and that was just my personality. What about managing schedule? You talked part about the time commitments, but also about how you peak towards the bigger tournaments, the, ask you about how you did that because you were really known to not play too often but right. really peak for the big events. I did. I said it is about Novak, it's about your your time here and, and, and winning majors now. You're to that level where it's about winning majors, staying number one. Davis Cup is important to you and, and, and that's sort of your decision if you play that but I think he feels like he has to. Um, you know he's figured it out. He's got a good team behind him. He's a good guy. I really felt him really just a nice person, yeah. um, outgoing, um, and he's, he's, he's doing great. I mean, he doesn't need to change anything. He said you're one of the few people that he could talk to. There aren't, it's kind of rarefied air. How many people can you talk to about being number one when there's only a handful of guys around yeah. that have been, and plus, that he'd always looked up to you growing up. Do you have a sense of pride that now you have this guy, the greatest player in the world, and you were a tremendous source of motivation for him and, and inspired him. Yeah, I feel pretty good. I mean, I don't, I don't think of myself as anything bigger than w what I did in my career. I felt, you know, I inspired Roger in some ways and Novak. Um, and it, listen, I'm pretty humble, as you know, and I don't think of myself as any sort of icon. I just put some numbers up that were pretty impressive, it, being number one for six years and 14 majors. And <clears throat> I think these guys, now that they're in it, like Novak's in it, it's like, how did Pete do that? You know, how do he stay up for six years? Roger can relate. Um, but Novak, I tell you, he's 24 now. These next four, like I told him, these next four years. This is the window. You this said, is the window. If this is the time you're going to be great, this was when this he was, was going to take that next step. 24 is when mentally you figure it out, physically you're good. And for the next four years until you're 28, 29, I feel like this is your prime. This is your prime real estate, whatever you want to call it. I, I feel like for the next four or five years, Novak's going to be in the top two or three in the world. Um, he's too good, he's a great mover, mentally he's figured it out, he's got the whole package. Next week on ATP World Tour Uncovered, presented by Rio, there's magic in the air as we head to the Mutua Madrid Open. At Hola Fernando, we meet the man from Madrid, aiming high at his hometown tournament. Don't forget to log on to atpworldtour.com for your 24-7 breaking news and talk with us on Facebook and Twitter. See you next week.